Every dry season, thousands of barramundi perish. In the past, Aboriginal artists, by painting barramundi, tapped the life essence of that species. And so they ensured that the fish's numbers would always be replenished. Bluey continues this timeless tradition. His work of art is now complete. He has drawn on the powers of the dream time, and so the animals he painted will continue to flourish. Louis's wife, Susan, and her friends tell stories to the children and illustrate them with string games. Susan makes a figure appropriate to the season. It represents lightning, and by the end of October, thunderstorms, forerunners of the wet season, are an almost daily occurrence. This forest, devastated by a late fire set by lightning, appears to have died, but the rains will soon revive it. Lightning and thunder are brought by a fearful being called Namarkum. He carries the lightning like an ark over his body and makes the thunder by striking stone axes against the clouds. Aljur, the grasshopper, is painted in electric colors. He appears in November, the time of the most tumultuous storms. The insects are Namarkun's children on Earth. Fierce downpours soon replenish the land. In this time of regeneration, nesting birds bring food to their young. Plants respond quickly. Forests that were charred and blackened are soon green again. Flowers and insects proliferate. To continue Jonathan's education into the traditional life of the Gagoju, Gabariki, Ilkir, and Jonathan's father, Naiji, take him to a remote but important place in Kakadu. The elders show Jonathan how stone knives and spear points are made. Uh, they are struck off a core rock. The stone knives are very sharp and in the past were used in initiation ceremonies to pierce the nose and cut distinctive designs on shoulders and chests. 
Mana mana lau. A group of men paint themselves in preparation for a ceremonial dance, a karabari. Among the Gagoju, there are no longer enough people with the knowledge and skills to perform the ceremonies. This group from neighboring tribes came to help the Gagoju perform their ceremonial obligations. The dancers reenact great deeds and mimic the dreamtime animals. Through ceremony and compliance with their laws, the Gagoju ensure that their unity with all living things continues. With Marawuti, who rules the floodplains, and with Ginga, who form the rock country. As long as they look after their country, the life force will endure in all its vigor and bounty. During their long history, the Gagoju have built no great monuments. But they have lived for more than 40,000 years in total harmony with their environment. They have not destroyed any land nor diminished its spirit. That is their monument. And in the long term, that may be the most important of all. The last of the traditional Gagoju men know everything that remains of their ancient culture. Only they have this knowledge. And they are old now. To the traditional people, the loss of their culture means oblivion. Without their culture, their story, they may survive in the modern world. But there will be no more true Gagoju people. During the season of the east wind, Nipper Gabariki died. His spirit has gone back to his country. <laughs> 